Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. So in today's podcast, we're going to talk about how much money the idea person, you know, like the person comps the idea, how much should they get? And we're going to debate, you know, depending on the role, what, what you should uh, compensate them for. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Hey, everyone. It's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, in today's podcast, we're talking about, like, you know, the person that sometimes people come to you with an idea. Hey, I got this great idea for this thing. Um, and then some people think, well, if you develop it, I should get half or 90% of the money, you know, the revenue, right? I mean, it's it's kind of wild the different perceptions of uh, or feelings that people have of what they're, quote, unquote, entitled to. And what I'd like to talk through is let's talk about different, you know, levels. So let's say start A. They come up with the idea, but they do no work whatsoever on anything. I mean, let's stick with software as a thing because in other things, there's a lot of physical costs if you're buying stuff, right? Let's stick with, there's, let's pretend like there's no website even. There's no, you know, that kind of cost. It's just development stuff. Um, Jackie, you know, here's the fun. Well, you and I, we haven't actually discussed this at all beforehand. So in that case, to me, even though the idea, it, it feels like it's a big thing. It's it's so little when it comes to how much usually how much work is involved. I'm going to guess I'm going to say ten percent to me is what I would you know I, I would offer them either a flat number which I probably would never pay up front because you got to wait until you see if it's good, um, and then usually I'd say it's a percent of what we make you're going to get X percent. Well, uh, how do you feel? Yeah, I, I'd say it truly depends to me on on how the the initial setup is. Um, I have a, a younger brother who who tries to come up with all kinds of different ideas, and some of them are better than others. Um, and then he gets people on board, and he does it in different types of ways. Some ideas other people encourage, and they're like, oh, yeah, we should do that. And then they start doing stuff, and uh, then they end up in, in some kind of whatever. Uh, and other ideas he actually does go out and hire a developer for. And uh, the ones where he actually hires someone, I do think he should get most of the um, uh, revenue from it because he's actually hiring someone. But where he has an idea and he shares it with whatever group he's with and does stuff with them, then his cut dwindles a bit. Not because the idea is bad, but if you ain't the one lifting after the idea was uh, perceived or whatever, yeah, yeah, that, that's where it becomes uh, less. And uh, or that's at least how I see it. Yeah, I, I, and I think you can equate it to whether you say it's time or money, but it's, it's basically the amount of risk. You know, who's taking on the risk? And you come up with the idea, but someone else is doing either doing the work or they're paying for the work to be done. Whoever's doing that, that's where, you know, even though the idea is unique, to hopefully unique, uh, it, it's valuable, but boy, without the other thing, it's nothing. It's just an idea, right? Um, so, so I totally agree with you. And actually, to, to continue on your route there, because I hadn't thought about it, but um, like when I work with, when I have people working for me, um, usually they're my ideas, right? Or I have an idea and it comes to me, and, and I'll say, hey, let's let's do this. What I like to do is, even though I'm, I usually pay, you know, by usually by the hour kind of thing or a project or whatever, but it's usually still related to time to some degree. Um, I'll pay them. And then I say, look, if we end up making some money off of this thing, you know, I'm going to give you some money too from, from the, you know, from, it's not a, it's not definitely not 50%, not even maybe 20 at the most. Right. But it's still, I want them to have an incentive to really try to work hard to come up with something good. Um, and that's why I do that. Right. Is, and I think it's kind of fair. Um, they're, even though they're getting paid, yeah, they're usually also not getting paid top dollar. Sorry. I didn't mean to think that. No, but yeah, you, you're right. If uh, you can come to some kind of agreement, I, I know a lot of people have done different types of setups. There's lots and lots of setups. And I've known that, that developers in general 
over the years have had all kinds of contracts where some of their pay was if it became a success. Um, so, so they might get shares in the company or whatever, kind of like uh, movie stars get a, a cut of uh, the ticket sales and whatever. Um, but, but yeah, if, if let's say you're the idea man, you get someone to, um, on board who's willing to just code and, and make uh, the program. Um, but if you're then the one actually moving it, selling it, creating an actual target market for it, then maybe it shifts again. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where the thing uh, lands when, when you do it that way. Yeah, so for those of you who haven't sold software, Right. That's the point where Jackie and I both, um, the coming up with it and creating it, that's not even, I'd say that's less than half the work, right? Or it's ballparking because the marketing is like, holy cow, um, the actual generating leads and following up and all the other stuff. There's so much more to it. And, and that's an excellent point. Jackie is like the idea person is at that point is usually not involved with that part of it at all. Um, it depends, you know, if it's an entrepreneur or not, but if it's that, they're usually leading it's their company. Uh, but yeah, that's a, it's a really good point, Jackie. If like, there's so much more to it. Like I have now, I, I think my list is, I think it's nearing 4,000 people on my email list. Um, it's been growing really well, but I'm like, Hey, you know, that's, that's value. I'm not just going to give that away. Right. For, for, you know, if someone has, Oh, I have this great idea. Hey, let me just send it to your list. No, that that's my list. <laughs> you know, I want to charge for that. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the, the second one, so that, that was just they come up with the idea and basically they, they do this and kind of walk away, right? The next level would be, because one that I, and this came up because someone came to me recently with an idea and we were you and I were talking very quickly about that, was what if the person actually stays on and is a beta tester? Like, what if it's doing something that we don't normally do? And we need someone that knows the market, knows the other people that are like them, because they're going to be a target market. They're like, I really want this for myself, but there's other people that would really want to buy it. And so th that way we have a person, you know, because often it's something that you and I, we don't know what those people do, you know, I, and you need someone that's really close to that, right? Or hopefully a couple people that are really close to that. And, and that's where they can definitely earn uh, a higher share, you know, of, of what they're getting, going to get paid to me. Cause that's very valuable and it can be time consuming. Yeah. And I, I've contemplated a few times on some of the software that I'd sell of having some kind of a, um, uh, affliction af affiliation uh, program yeah. where, where if uh, my customers, um, refer people to my software of some kind they'll get some kind of incentive because it's worth that and it's worth whatever 10 percent of the cost of the item or whatever it might be just the same as actually being the person that gets the idea the person that develops it the person that sells the person that the maintains it the person that supports it whatever part of uh, the chain you are um figuring out exactly who gets how much of the pie that's that's a hard one yeah yeah and and that's where you know hopefully the reasonable whoever you're talking with is reasonable and you can explain to them look at all these other things that have to happen you know um and but that they can hopefully, you can keep them involved and give them ways that they can still, even if they're not programmers, right, still be involved and contribute. Um, or maybe they even, maybe the other thing is you say, well, give me, give me, you know, some of the money as well, right? Hey, let's, you know, we can have, we can develop this for you, but, you know, pay whatever, you know, some of the money up front, split it with me even, and then we'll split on the, the earnings, right? And again, it's absorbing risk, right? It's who's taking the risk with their money. Um, usually that's me full, full throttle. So that's why I, I take a bigger percent of the money in general, because I'm the one risking my money um, and a little bit of my time, but then my marketing know-how and doing other stuff. So, yeah. And I'd say I've, I've, I've had different types of offers through the years where uh, someone would come in, have this great idea here. This is a surefire market. 
this uh, software here we're gonna make a ton um let's uh, get all of this done let's collect the group of people let's sit down let's go out and sell it uh, you know what we need some starting capital can you provide so and so much and I'm 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 not a person that really fits inside that type of setup because to me software and and this type of ventures are hard for me to believe before I've seen it work in at least some degree. Yeah, well and that's where also it gets back to so one we didn't really talk about was how big, whether it's time or hours and programming or whatever, how big of an event, like the thing they come, the idea they come up with, can I do it in a day? Well, then, you know, it, it, that's very different than it's going to take me three months of solid coding, you know, to, before I have a prototype, right? So that, that changes things again, where it's not that big of a risk. Okay, I'll, I might create it, you know, uh, on the fly and, and see where we go and not worry so much about it. Yeah, I, I must say, and that's that's me where I've had the most luck, and I, I'm I'm not exactly sure how some of the big tech giants today actually did it back in the day because yeah, there are a few movies and stuff like that, but uh, they there were one two guys who knows in a garage somewhere starting to make something. And then going door to door because that was the world they lived in, right. um, trying to get someone to, yeah, uh, buy a piece of their software. In the total old fashion, one payment, one copy, and then that's yours and we'll move on. Um, it, it can't have been easy, but again, they started from that. They didn't go out and collect a lot of venture funds and who knows, I need three million before I even sit down and try to code this stuff. What? That, that, that wasn't how it was done at the time. It was your free time. And I, I know that today you can probably make Fortnite as yourself back in your cellar, but Someone still made, I don't remember, Floppy Bird or whatever it was where you were controlling a bird that was flying across the screen and he made a buttload of money. So it's it's still possible to actually get around those big risks when it comes to software. Well, I'm not sure you always need to go for that big win uh, at a such start. Yeah, and, and another podcast that, that we have planned is to, you know, how to know when you have a good idea, right? And part of that is um, touching on the stuff that you're allu alluding to at the moment, right? But because it, 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 it the, the world has changed compared to when Gates was just starting. There there was no list of customers. There was no nothing, right? And they had to do so much. Now there's some amazing channels out there, which greatly simplify it. Um, yeah, and so anyway, we can save that one for, for that discussion, but... I think, in yeah, whole, yes. you know, the ideas definitely are valuable, but they're, I do, I'm, I'm grateful. Some people realize they're still just an idea, right? And until you actually start working on it and doing something with it, an idea is great, but without implementation, it's nothing, sadly. Yeah. I've, I've seen because of my little brother, maybe more than anything, I've seen so many ideas try to get off the ground and he puts lots of effort into it and he has other people on board, but I often just keep at a distance, um, mostly because I'm busy myself, but seeing it rise and become a thing and he's had some bad business connections a few times. He hasn't really been in the hole per se because of it. But a lot of times it's starting to look like something and then it just levels off and slowly dwindles away again. And it's like, yeah, the idea was great. And apparently it seemed like people were liking it, but then it never really made any money. Yeah. Went away again. And, I think that'll be something yeah. we'll hopefully touch on a bit in the, uh, the other podcast of 
how do you, you know, how do you try to make sure you really do have a good idea, right? And and I have some comments on that, but um, and of course there is no yeah. way to tell in the long run, right? But it's it's at least hedging your bets and increasing the odds that you got it going. But I, and actually another one, and I think it probably fit into a different podcast. But you brought up a good thing of like, who should you have on your team? Like, what different skill sets should you have, and how do you know? that like my my contractor my buddy that's been working on my home here um he literally you know did these two rooms we added and it was like a forty thousand dollar project right so it's a pretty big ticket item we had no plans we had no any because why because i trusted him because i know he knows what he's doing and he's not going to you know do a bad job so it it's a, such a game changer when you can trust you know who you're working with like you and i have done stuff for years now right we don't have to worry about little <laughs> little things and it's how do you make sure you don't have to necessarily work with someone for years before you have that relationship. But, you know, simply what was the one I think in Dan Kennedy's book, like if they can't come up with three references of people saying they do a good job, like you probably should not be doing business with them. Right. Like it's, you know, that's a sure sign. If you can't, the person can't give you three references where they've done something similar, you know, probably don't want to dive deep and be relying on them as a business partner on whatever. Right. But anyway, um, that might be a fun. Yeah. Yeah. Fun Don't time. go all in on whatever idea they have. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let us know if, um, you know, if, what, what do you guys think? Like, are we crazy? Um, you know, and, and, and just remember we, Jackie and I both come from both sides of being the idea guys coming up with stuff and at least to some degree implementation side of it. So I think we're a little more open-minded on it. Um, I'm curious where you think, cause, cause I could definitely see, a programmer saying, I'm, I'm the one doing all the work. The idea is nothing. It's nothing unless I do this. So it, I think it'd be very interesting if you guys chime in on what you think. Yeah, let's hear it. Cheers.